it's the year 2025, the RR virus pandemic had swept through the entire globe, the human population fell by two-third, while the survivors underwent some sort of genetic evolution, granting them more than double of their original capabilities, however, the animals had also changed and gotten fiercer, some could even easily shake off the attacks of guns and artillery. These monsters started to invade into human habitats, forcing humans to escape and build a new base as a safe haven. The monsters were seemingly forcing the humans towards extinction, but when all hope was lost in this world, a life form that was stronger than humans emerged, the warrior. In the year 2056, in the Jiangnan city base, located in the Yian district, stood Luo Feng, an 18-year-old 12th grade student at third high school. The college entrance examinations were looming, and his friend next to him praised him for being an elite student at the dojo at such a young age. People even sought his advice, even those who were not particularly bright. However, Luo Feng humbly replied that he was still just an elite student, and in the real world, his combat abilities were barely on par with that of a security guard. He believed it was far from enough. Just as he was lost in his thoughts, Luo Feng felt a presence and looked forward to see a young and beautiful girl approaching. Her name was Xu Xin. Upon seeing her, his friend sighed and remarked on how Luo Feng's eyes always went blank whenever she was around. His friend urged him to confess his feelings before it was too late, considering the upcoming entrance exams. But Luo Feng insisted that it wasn't the right time. He felt he didn't have the right to approach her until he became a warrior. He firmly believed that he needed to prove himself before he could even think of seeing her. Hearing Luo Feng's response, his friend was shocked. He exclaimed that becoming a warrior was asking for too much. Out of the 5,000 students in their school, not a single one was a warrior. However, Luo Feng resolved to keep his feelings locked inside his heart, allowing them to turn into memories. He didn't want to burden himself or Xu Xin until he achieved his goal. While they were engrossed in conversation, another boy approached Luo Feng and challenged him. The boy accused Luo Feng of ambushing him previously and threatened to utterly wreck him if he tried anything again. Unfazed, Luo Feng confidently invited the boy to come at him if he dared. Suddenly, an ear-piercing screech filled the air, causing everyone to cover their ears. They looked up to see a bird flying in the sky, attacking a glass building. It was a black-crowned golden eagle, a monster known to move at three times the speed of sound. The creature was rumored to be 20 meters long, with feathers harder than diamonds. Although the city's airspace was protected by a barrier, it seemed that breaking through wouldn't be difficult for the eagle if it truly desired to do so. The attack shattered the glass, sending shards raining down on the ground. In a moment of danger, Luo Feng spotted a piece of glass hurtling toward his friend Wei Wen. Reacting swiftly, Luo Feng shouted a warning and intercepted the glass, shattering it and saving Wei Wen's life. Confused, Wei Wen asked what had happened, and Luo Feng nonchalantly brushed it off, telling Wei Wen to be careful. They left the scene. But Wei Wen mentioned that this particular type of black crown golden eagle had been defeated by a mysterious warrior in the past. Hearing Wei Wen's statement, Luo Feng was astonished and inquired further. Wei Wen elaborated, recounting how the monster had once destroyed an entire city, only to be sliced in half by a warrior wielding a titanium alloy combat sword in a flash of light. This revelation sparked a fire within Luo Feng. He dreamed of becoming a warrior, following in the footsteps of these superhuman beings. He envisioned himself wielding a combat sword and hunting down such beasts. In the next scene, we find ourselves in Luo Feng's modest one-bedroom unit at home. Due to financial constraints, his parents often slept on the sofa, making it a safe haven for Luo Feng and his younger brother, Luo Hua. Upon seeing Luo Feng enter, his mother informed him that dinner was almost ready and asked him to call his younger brother. Entering his brother's room, Luo Feng found Luo Hua engrossed in his laptop. After greeting each other, Luo Feng asked what he was researching. Together, they left the room, with Luo Feng pushing Luo Hua's wheelchair. Luo Hua shared his research findings, while Luo Feng reminisced about the accident that led to both of his legs being amputated during childhood. The medical fees had been too much to bear, resulting in his confinement to a wheelchair. However, Luo Feng believed that if he could get into a military school and become a warrior, their family could live in a bigger house, bathed in sunlight year-round. Later, we find Luo Feng running through the streets, tirelessly working to improve his physical abilities and change his family's destiny. He knew that with enough effort, nothing in this world was unachievable. He was determined to become a warrior. After his run, Luo Feng decided to visit the dojo to check his progress. As he stepped on the scale, the screen displayed 809 kilograms. Dissatisfied, he knew that he needed to reach the benchmark of 900 kilograms. Observing another student effortlessly achieve 900 kilograms with a single punch, 
Luo Feng yearned for the day when he could achieve the same feat. However, he also pondered the possibility of triggering another migraine, an occurrence he had experienced several times before. During those migraines, his physical capabilities would skyrocket, even causing him to pass out temporarily. After waking up, he would find no adverse effects, only exponential improvements. It had been a while since he last experienced such a migraine. Brother Yang, who was present, advised Luo Feng not to rush and assured him that he was still young. With a little more effort, he would undoubtedly achieve a breakthrough. Curious about Luo Feng's future path, Brother Yang asked if he had decided. As Luo Feng walked home, he contemplated the four paths that warriors typically took. The first option was to enter the military, which offered safety and benefits for the warrior's family. The second option was to work for a dojo, providing more freedom but also higher risks. The third option involved working for financial groups or households, either as an assassin or a bodyguard. The fourth option was to become a mercenary, which offered the most freedom but was also the riskiest. While these decisions were typically made after becoming a warrior, Luo Feng pondered them in advance. He knew that he couldn't choose a dangerous job, as he had to take care of his parents and younger brother. Joining the military seemed to be the best choice for him. However, he first needed to pass the entrance exam, or all his considerations would be in vain. A month later, on June 16, the first examination hall in Jiangnan City was abuzz with students. Luo Feng found the examination paper challenging but believed he could solve the questions. After completing the easier ones, he tackled the difficult ones with determination. Suddenly, a sharp pain pierced his head, and he glanced at his watch, realizing his pulse was racing. He wondered if his migraine problem was about to strike at that very moment. Why did it have to happen now, during the exam? The pain became unbearable and Luo Feng fainted on the spot. Other students called for an ambulance, and he was quickly taken to the hospital. An hour later, Luo Feng regained consciousness, and his friend Wei Wen anxiously asked if he was alright. Luo Feng assured him that he was fine and that the doctors found no problems. However, he suspected he had failed the mathematics exam. Wei Wen tried to comfort him, mentioning that the questions he missed appeared to be the hardest ones. Luo Feng hoped that Wei Wen was right. Now it was the day when the results were displayed on electronic screens in the school. Students eagerly searched for their marks and asked each other if they had checked. Luo Feng looked at the screen and read his name with a score of 557. The acceptance marks were 561, which meant he had missed it by 4 marks. Disappointed, Luo Feng felt that the military school and he were simply not meant to be. Upon returning home, Luo Feng greeted his parents and informed them of the result. His father tried to console him attributing his failure to the migraine problem that had struck during the exam. Luo Feng, however, revealed that he was grateful for the last migraine. He explained that in the past, each migraine had led to a significant increase in his physical capabilities, and this time was no different. He had decided to participate in the warrior tryouts. His mother was shocked by his decision and asked if he was serious. Luo Feng replied that he had already tested his abilities and was close to reaching the benchmark. He believed he could pass the tryouts with his current body and abilities. His father, filled with joy, remarked that their family would finally have a warrior. In the next scene, it was July 1st in Yangzhou City, inside the headquarters of the Extreme Guild. Luo Feng entered the resting lounge and spotted Brother Yang. You're here too, he remarked, approaching him. Brother Yang greeted him and asked if he was also there for the warrior tryouts. He mentioned that he had attempted them last month but failed due to his speed which is why he was trying again this month. Just then, a person entered the room and instructed all the participants to follow him for the tryouts. The first station was a test of punching strength, with many people giving it a shot. It was finally Luo Feng's turn. He stepped up and unleashed his punch on the machine, scoring an impressive 1,101 kilograms, well above the 900 kilograms benchmark. Brother Yang, witnessing the astonishing result, couldn't help but exclaim in amazement. Even his own personal best was only 995 kilograms, and he clearly remembered that Luo Feng hadn't even reached the benchmark last time. He wondered what on earth Luo Feng had been doing in the past month to achieve such remarkable progress. Soon, it was time for the speed test, and once again, Luo Feng stepped forward. He performed exceptionally well, surpassing the benchmark of 25 meters per second with a speed of 28 meters per second. The third round tested reflexes, and Luo Feng aced it effortlessly, passing the tryouts in one go. Now, all that remained was the actual combat test, scheduled for the 1st of August. While chatting with Brother Yang about their performance, a person approached Luo Feng and informed him that the guild master was looking for him. Confused, 
Luo Fen questioned why the guild master would want to see him but ultimately decided to meet him as requested. He entered a room and saw two individuals, one of whom he recognized as Jiang Nian, the instructor from the Extreme Dojo. Curiosity arose as he wondered who the other person might be. The unidentified person handed Luo Feng a card, introducing himself as Wu Tong, the head guild master of the Extreme Dojo. Wu Tong expressed his admiration for Luo Feng's outstanding performance in the Warrior Tryouts, stating that he believed Luo Feng would soon become a highly sought after talent, attracting the attention of major dojos. He then went on to make a request, asking Luo Feng to consider joining their Extreme Dojo. In the next scene, as he thought of Wu Tong's words, as Wu Tong assured him that money was not an issue, promising him a mansion in one of the city's best locations. Moreover, he emphasized that the Extreme Dojo was a treasure trove of training materials, offering Luo Feng the opportunity to become the world's best warrior. Wu Tong encouraged Luo Feng to aim high and break through limits, setting an unprecedented legacy. Lost in thought, Luo Feng pondered Wu Tong's words and came to the realization that ambition was essential. He took out his phone and dialed his dad's number, eager to share the good news of passing all three tests and his determination to become the world's best warrior. However, his call went unanswered. He then tried calling his mom and asked if his dad had already left for work. After informing her about his success in the tryouts, he hung up the call, planning to surprise his dad by visiting him personally and sharing the news face to face. Meanwhile, a few minutes ago in the Yian district's Tianzhu Park area, Luo Feng's dad was working hard with his fellow workers, transferring expensive furniture. The employer noticed a crack and saw an opportunity to scam him, thinking of how to earn some extra money. Just as Luo Feng's dad was about to answer his phone, a loud voice interrupted them, berating the workers for breaking a valuable piece. The employer accused them of damaging the expensive Yunnan marble and questioned their ability to compensate for the loss. Luo Feng's dad attempted to intervene and discuss the issue, but one of the workers pointed out that the crack had already been there before they arrived, suggesting that the employer was attempting to deceive them. Understanding the situation, Luo Feng approached the employer and tried to calm him down, suggesting they finish moving the furniture first before continuing the conversation. However, the employer refused to listen and shoved Luo Feng to the ground. Witnessing this act of aggression, the other workers stood up for Luo Feng and confronted the employer, demanding an explanation for his actions. The situation quickly escalated, and the employer called his people to attack the workers, and started beating them with punches and kicks. A voice suddenly cut through the chaos, commanding everyone to stop. A person emerged, forcefully breaking through the gate. The employer recognized him as Luo Feng and accused him of intruding into his house. Worried about his battered father, Luo Feng's concern grew. Looking at his son, Luo Feng's dad questioned why he was there. Just as he did, another person sneaked up behind Luo Feng, attempting to attack him. Filled with rage, Luo Feng declared that he would not allow anyone to bully his father, and with a single punch, he knocked the assailant to the ground. Rushing to his father's side, Luo Feng made sure he was alright. However, another attacker tried to strike him from behind. Reacting swiftly, Luo Feng retaliated with a punch, colliding with his assailant's fist, sending him crashing into a wall. The man cried out in pain, feeling his wrist break. Luo Feng fixed his gaze on Zhang Ho Bai, seething with anger. He confronted him, demanding to know how he dared to harm his father. Looking at Luo Feng, Zhang Ho Bai felt a wave of fear wash over him. He couldn't believe what had just happened. Luo Feng was just one person, yet he had effortlessly taken down all three of Zhang Hobai's bodyguards. Trembling, Zhang Hobai stuttered, struggling to comprehend the situation. What are you doing? This is my house. He protested weakly. Luo Feng looked at him with unwavering determination and asked, How dare you hit my dad? Zhang Hobai's confusion grew as he tried to recall whether he had indeed struck Luo Feng's father. He glanced at the workers, finally realizing that the person he had shoved earlier was Luo Feng's dad. It all made sense now, and he understood why Luo Feng was so furious. As Luo Feng approached him, Zhang Hobai pleaded with a mix of fear and desperation, don't come closer. Luo Feng, I'm warning you, this is considered trespassing. But Luo Feng paid no heed to his empty threats. Angered by his actions, Luo Feng delivered a powerful punch to Zhang Hobai's stomach, sapping him of all strength. With a single hand, Luo Feng lifted him by the neck, his voice dripping with fury. Zhang Ho Bai, if anything happens to my dad, I will never forgive you. Feeling the vice-like grip around his neck, Zhang Ho Bai realized that escape was futile. Fear gripped him as he wondered how Luo Feng had become so strong. They had both been elite students aiming to become warriors, so why was Luo Feng on a completely different level? Suddenly, more people arrived on the scene, 
demanding that Luo Feng release Zhang Hobai. One of them identified himself as a police officer and berated the group for engaging in assault and trespassing. He ordered them to be taken away. Perplexed, Luo Feng wondered who had called the police and how they had arrived so swiftly. Nonetheless, he knew he had nothing to worry about. He had just passed the warrior tryouts, and any cases involving warriors fell under the jurisdiction of the base's security bureau. The police officer asked Luo Feng if he was the one responsible for injuring the security guards, to which Luo Feng simply agreed. The officer instructed his team to investigate the matter further, intending to take all parties involved into custody. Luo Feng's dad approached him and advised him to cooperate honestly, assuring him that he would find a way to get him out. Luo Feng reassured his dad, telling him not to worry. He informed him that every case related to warriors would be handed over to the security bureau, and they held no authority over them. This news brought relief to Luo Feng's dad. As they were about to be taken away, Luo Feng bid his dad farewell, promising him that after a few days, his record as a warrior would be added to his identification files. Once that happened, nobody would be able to do anything to him. He acknowledged that he might be detained for a couple of days, but he remained confident that he would be released soon. And this is how the first part of this manhua ends. Well, guys, if you liked this video and want a part 2, comment below with the word part 2. Also, in the future, I'll be bringing more and more exciting videos. Please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, hit the like button, and stay tuned until the next video.